So if you would like to also be a part of this program, definitely check the link down below. We do a lot of these free coaching programs as well, either resumes, cover letters, job application, case interviews, or mock interviews, behavioral specifically too, or even just success on the job. So definitely check out that link down below. In addition to, if you want that paid coaching experience that's private and not on YouTube, then you can also DM me specifically on Instagram or LinkedIn. For this particular case, it is going to be very focused on you asking me questions for the information you need to answer this. So it is intentionally leaving out a lot of information. Sometimes it'll be like a one or two sentence business statement and then a one or two sentence problem statement. These are like, you may need to, you may need to even ask me a few times, like, okay, can you repeat the question? Because sometimes they, even though it's very short, it will ask for a lot of information because they'll kind of separate by commas. So you need to be very careful with that. And this is also specifically trying to see and test you on what kind of questions you ask your logical thinking. So be very verbal with what you're saying and like your, why you're asking that particular question. I think like that's sometimes what people end up lacking when they have these questions is that they like, they go into this kind of like, oh, I'm going to go in this path, this path, this path, this path. But really you should be going in it kind of like a decision tree, like, okay, okay, this works. Then I'm going to keep going. And then you have to kind of show like, oh, because you said this, then I'm going to ask you this. Like that's the kind of questioning that you should be asking me. And then at the end, you can kind of go through like your full thought process and your solution. So because you're more interested or you have experience in the health technology area, I'm going to focus a little bit more on that. So unless you want to kind of consider other industries or other kind of technology, which ones are you more interested in doing today? Um, we can do health. Since okay. I'm more... All right. So I'm just going to get started. This is all verbal, so I'm not going to be writing in the chat or telling you anything. So I'm going to just first start off and say my organization is a major healthcare system, and we just learned that 40% of our website visits are from mobile devices. The market is rapidly shifting to a mobile access model, and we need to adapt our technology accordingly. How can we become digital leaders in our market and drive foundational loyalty? I'm going to last notes here. Um, mm -hmm. Just want to make sure that uh, I have everything here. Mm -hmm. So our client is a major health system. And it sounds like- I'm going to um, stop you there first. You say our client. I'm talking as if I am the client, my organization. So you want to kind of shift your verbiage that way. Okay. So- Situation here is um, you, you guys are a major healthcare system, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it sounds like you guys get forty percent of your uh, visits from mobile. Mm -hmm. Okay, forty percent from mobile. So, are we going to assume? Can we assume the other sixty percent is from um, essentially uh, desktop? Yep. Can we assume that? Okay, cool. And then. Uh, the problem here is they they want to be you guys want to be uh, digital leaders and drive loyalty. Mm -hmm. so that's what we're trying to solve here. Yep. Okay. Um, do you guys have any metrics on how you want to be digital leaders or drive loyalty? Any specific metrics on that? That's what we're going to ask you because we don't know how or even what we should be considering. Like, how have others been doing it out there in the industry? Like, that's what we're curious about. But we want to be leaders in it. We don't just want to be followers to the other healthcare providers out there. Okay. Great. Um, do you guys have, have you guys done any research yet on, on it? Any um, data? Uh, we know that we definitely want to add on to our website. So we just don't know how to approach that, or maybe we want to do a mobile application or incorporate some kind of bot. We don't know, but we do know we want to focus on something that can at least drive foundational loyalty. Okay. And um, so let's, let's talk about uh, you guys. I, I, first, I mm -hmm. want to know um, kind of the scope before we begin this. Yep. Um, so what is your um, geographical footprint? How, how large are you guys? Yep. So currently we are based in the U.S., but we do want to expand globally as well. It's the only concern with expanding globally is like any particular healthcare regulations or governments that may be a little bit more strict about what kind of healthcare data is circulating around the system. So that's like the only reason why we haven't expanded just yet. Okay. Sounds great there. Um, to 
you know, dive deeper into that, that you guys want to expand globally, um, do we want to consider that for, for today or is that something kind of in the future that we're thinking of? If it is a way to drive foundational loyalty and be a digital leader, then yes. Okay, so we can consider that mm -hmm. today. Great, so US, but also wants to expand globally. Um, and for facility wise, I would assume you guys have you know, several very large facilities and smaller facilities. You guys mm -hmm. are quite large since you're yep. a major healthcare system. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so let's talk about more of the scope where how long do you guys want? What's your timeline and what's, what's your budget? Yeah, so we're trying to compete with a lot of our competitors. And if we want to do that, we need to act fast. So hopefully by the end of next year. So within a year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any issues with budget? We do have limited budget, but if we know that there's going to be good loyalty with our customers, then we can kind of think about it we're like, oh, you know, this is an investment because that means we're going to get a lot of returning customers to our platform. Great. So you guys really, really uh, like the uh, customer loyalty aspect. That's mm -hmm. where we really want to dive deep into. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just want to make sure that I caught everything. Um, yep. I think that's for me. I think that's that's a good start so far. So I have some good information that we can start. Um, mm -hmm. Another another question is: Have you guys done any? Um, what's your current technology right now? And um, have you guys implemented any other technologies before? Yeah. So currently we have a website, but we also deploy it as a web application. So that way, if we wanted to make it as a mobile application, it is possible that way. Currently, we are on iOS and on Android. All right. I uh, just want to make sure that I have an understanding of this. So currently, you guys only have a website, essentially, mm -hmm. to the, um, um, you know, to your, your health system, or yep. clinic, whatever it is. Um, so it can go mobile. Mm -hmm. And um, currently, it's also on iOS and Android. Does that mean you guys have an application already for it? Or it just is the function? It can be able. It can be. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we okay. designed the website in a way that it could be deployed as a web application, but it's not currently out. Okay, so that is definitely one area where we can take advantage because it sounds like you guys have 40% mobile visits mm -hmm. and, um, and you guys already have a website. So 60% of your traffic goes there. And now since you don't have a mobile, you know, mobile solution yet, mm -hmm. and 40% of your traffic goes there, I, I'd say we should take advantage of that for sure. Mm -hmm. So dive a little bit deeper into that. Okay. Um, so before we do that, can you take a few minutes for me to structure my thoughts um, sure. so that we can organize this? Yep. Awesome. All right. So mm -hmm. um, there's three main buckets I would like to take a look into um, for us if we want to um, kind of increase our customers' uh, loyalty here and be a digital yep. leader. So the three main buckets. First one I want to talk about is um, essentially let's talk about uh, Agile how we are going to develop this, the way we're going to develop this. Mm -hmm. uh, so you guys uh, want to act fast, uh, at least within a year. So um, for uh, software development lifecycle, we're saying we're going with a mobile um, application, possibly we're going to mobile route. Um, so you either have the waterfall method or the agile method. And the one that I, I wanted to focus on is called the agile, um, since it's, focused more, it's focusing more on speed. For example, um, we can involve our um, stakeholders, mm -hmm. like our, um, our end users, like the customers, the patients, and we can also involve um, the, the IT team, as well as the doctors, nurses who are going to use this. Mm -hmm. um, help build it um, so we can get what they need for their workflows. And also, um, while Agile is so great is because we can um, adapt to ch changes quickly and update our system very fast. So uh, this will be good to keep up with competitors. Um, and then second, I would like to focus on is functionality. Mm -hmm. So um, this is going to be more with the uh, driving the loyalty here. So for loyalty, um, some features I'd like to talk about is, uh, for example, making it easier for our um, our, our users, our patients, yep. and even our, our providers and nurses. Um, one one big um, issue that hospital systems face is um, is revenue cycle. Okay, it takes them a while to get paid. Um, so one one feature we can add is um, e pay. Okay, so they can just mm -hmm. pay through their phone, get an electronic bill, pay it off, 
the hospital, uh, the, the customer or the patient gets to pay off their bill quickly. And then the hospital system um, gets the bill paid off very mm -hmm. quickly as well. Um, so that makes them more liquid, more financially healthy. And then um, we can also add telehealth. Okay, that's another functionality that's that's growing here. We can add telehealth, uh, make it a little bit easier on our customers, and maybe they'll like that. It's more uh, convenient. Um, if, if like another pandemic hits, they can just get on their phone and have mm -hmm. a, a visit instead of going to the doctors. Um, and then we can have a some type of possibly a loyalty program as well. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll have they'll have a username that they can go in a, a, a web portal, um, and we should make it user friendly, so it's very easy to navigate. So um, anyone in, dem in our demographics can use it, because uh, I know the older population, if it's not user friendly, they can struggle a little bit more with it. Yep. So I be sure to make it uh, user friendly, mm -hmm. um, and then finally, we have really good um, machine learning or data analysis, because uh, we're collecting a lot of data. We're making them log in, create accounts. We collect a lot of data from our patients, and this data uh, we can use uh, to look for trends. Uh, for example, what for our customer, our patients, what do they come in the most? Um, for example, if they come in mainly for a cold, we can focus a lot of our care on uh, taking care of colds. Okay, yep. for example, that's just one example. Looking at trends, and finally, the last bucket I like to take a look into is any uh, security. So, security issues and regulation, okay? Mm -hmm. This is healthcare we're talking about. And this will also, if they were wanting to expand um, to a different geography, yep. uh, definitely take a look at regulation there and different rules on that and um, how secure they want their data. I know, for example, we're gonna focus on the United States. Yep. We have HIPAA laws, okay? So we need to follow those strictly um, and ensure that our, our patient's information is um, you know taken care of and it, it won't be, uh, there won't be any loss with that. So um, make sure, for example, make sure our data, data is encrypted, have really mm -hmm. good passwords, um, and maybe second deal factor authentication, second factor authentication, mm -hmm. I forgot what it's called, but mm -hmm. something like that. Okay. So those are those some of the areas I would like to take a look into. Okay. And is that your final answer? Um, I think those are two good buckets to start with. I believe it hits with um, you know, they're, they're limited to time with the agile, mm -hmm. um, for customer loyalty, add really good functionalities and, you know, keeping up the, the speed and then, uh, for, um, any risks, look at security and regulation. Mm -hmm. Maybe the only other thing I could look at is maybe take a dive deep into our customers and look at what their preferences are. Yep. Um, so we can know what they prefer and follow that trend as well. That's the only other thing I would look at. Okay. And maybe um, also focus more on the technology because it's the first time they're doing a um, a mobile yep. mobile application. So um, maybe we'll have to talk about more in the agile about deployment, how we're going to deploy this. Maybe do like a a piloting um, or some sort of demo first and test it out, uh, mm -hmm. we, or like a phased approach instead of a a whole big bang go live at once. So those mm -hmm. are more risks we'll have to talk about and considerations yeah. there. Yeah. Okay, so I do have a few words of feedback and also some additional things I wanted to add. So first off, I think like you start off saying like, oh, the client, and then you fixed yourself and said you, then back at the end, you said they, and I'm like, they is me. So you, you <laughs> so you need to be a little bit more consistent that I know like you may have been focusing more about solutioning, but not really the fact that I'm the client. Like, I know this is right, a little bit weird because yeah. it's a mock interview. And when yeah. you're actually doing the interview, you may actually even mess up that way too. But just listening from the very beginning, like, okay, I imagine you're the client. And I think that despite that though, like you did act professional, you acted like you would be reacting to a client and asking these questions and in, in, in a professional way. So that was good. And your answer was pretty thorough in the fact that you took in the industry considerations, actually like even the government as well. You look into the actual problem statement of like, okay, foundational loyalty, we see that this is very important. How can we use all these features to kind of support that? So one consideration though that I did want to say is that you said at the beginning three buckets and then at the end you said two buckets and then during the actual time you said it, there were like more than five buckets. So it wasn't really that consistent there as to like, how many buckets are there? Are they like 
sub buckets? Are you saying like focus on these? Yeah, but then I, the I, other... I should have clarified as sub buckets. Yeah, under yeah. those main buckets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that that part, like, I would clarify a little bit more because I was like, wait, do we have more? Like, are are we are you trying to drill down? Is it just something that, like, the first one you mentioned is like the first few things we should consider, and then if we have time and money, then yes, we'll do the others. So it was just information overload. And at some point, <laughs> I would even recommend you that like after one bucket, you could say, do you have any particular questions about that? So people can kind of let this sink in. If you have throw five things out, then they're like, I don't even remember the first few things. I don't even remember telehealth. And then the government, I'm like everything else is like, what? What did you just say? <laughs> so that, that I would just like slow down there and then maybe like between one or two buckets kind of slow down and say, hey, do you have any particular questions that you would want me to answer about this before we move on? Just to see that I'm engaged. Um, I think like one other thing that was bothering me was you never asked me, what is this healthcare system doing in the first place? So you mm -hmm. like mentioned during your answer saying like, oh, the doctors and the nurses, like what if my system was CVS? Like then all of a sudden yeah. you're talking about actual people who need to go maybe like refill their prescription. And yes, they do work with doctors and nurses, maybe not nurses, I don't know. But like, mm -hmm. if you didn't ask about what that system is, then you could have kind of figured out a little bit more because what if that system was telehealth and then you just suggested telehealth to them now, like, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> the, from that, that's like something I expected from the very beginning, but okay. for a really, for a first run on this type of case, you did really well. I think like the kind of questions you asked was very professional. I understood your logic on why you were asking questions. And then your answer was very, uh, I mean, other than the fact that I was not clear about what buckets were what, uh, <laughs> the actual solution itself was pretty thorough. So I think that was good. Yeah. Based on the feedback and uh, my performance, uh, if you know, would you were the hiring hiring manager, uh, would you say I pass, Christine, or um, would would be iffy? <laughs> uh, I I would say that if the other candidates are not as good, then yes, mm -hmm. I would pass you. But okay. I think like the considerations, even as simple as asking what is this healthcare system, was yeah. just kind of glaring in my head. <laughs> I, I kind of, yeah, that was my bad. I just kind of assumed because, you know, I'm like, oh, it's a large healthcare system in the US. They probably do everything. I assume they have doctors and nurses. But yeah, this is the case. I should probably ask that. Yeah. yeah that's a good question. To ask. Yeah. So it, that, that's like the only thing that would have been, I think, if you had that right or if you asked that question, it may have changed your answers. And plus, it would have actually yeah. gotten you the offer. But everything else would have was good, even, even though you messed up a little bit on the buckets. But whatever you said, the content was good. Right. Yeah. So I could have um, asked that question to clarify where mm -hmm. I can focus more on. I kind of went with the more general kind of yeah. try, try to catch everything. Yeah. And then, yeah, try to go yeah. into details of that. Okay. So mm -hmm. um, I just need to be more, to clarify more about those sub buckets. So mm -hmm. here are my three main buckets and then I have sub buckets. So for first one sub bucket, mm -hmm. I have these two, three reasons. Talk mm -hmm. about those, go to the next one and then ask yep. if you have questions. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yeah, I think like you you may have started off thinking like you got everything you're like, oh, I'm going to make this assumption. But if you're going to make that assumption, say, OK, I'm going to assume that you are blah, blah, blah. So you have to kind of say it out loud. Oh, yeah, and yeah. then I could I could fix your assumption instead of going down a rabbit hole. And I can't and it's like past the point where I would fix it. So yeah. at any cost where you think you're going to make any assumption, say at the very beginning so that I have the opportunity or the interviewer has the opportunity to fix your assumption. They may even yeah, let you go by and just say like, okay, well, you never asked me. So I mean like, yeah, sure. You made an assumption, but I'll, I'll, so sometimes the interviewer may judge it off of your answer from that assumption, or they'll be like, why didn't you ask me in the first place? I'm the client. Like, why are you making an assumption in front of me? <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I would, should have been like, okay, so my assumption is you're yep. a large healthcare system, you know, I would assume that you guys cover everything and that yep. depends on them if they're like, no, we focus on this or yeah, mm -hmm. I think, yeah we can go with that. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay, cool. Sometimes the luck of the draw in the interview is right. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think like in consulting, though, like we, we learned this too, as well, uh, is that like in consulting, you always make an assumption, you know, for sure, they can't refute. So even if you say something like, oh, I think like you guys cover all this kind of stuff. If you're not 100% sure, especially with the information I gave you, you have to ask, can you confirm this rather than moving on? So the assumption, like if you know, like the fact that it is like blah, 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 but the case specifically doesn't mention it, then you can say, yes, I'm gonna make an assumption that this is this. Like if your competitor is CVS or your competitor is Whole Foods or something like that, you can talk about that because it's in the same industry. You can make that mm -hmm. assumption. But if it's something where you're not entirely sure what, then you should definitely ask to confirm. Right. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was thinking of another bucket as like competitors would have been good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's another angle you could have taken was like, who are your competitors and what are they doing? Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But then I went back and we're like, they want to be the leader. They don't care yeah. about the comparison as much. I was like, that's not as important as the other ones. So I just. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you go for a more strategy-based role, they do care about the what competitors are doing, no matter what, sure. like you say, like you're a leader, because how True. can you yeah. lead if you don't know who the followers are? Yeah. 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 True. Yeah. Yeah, that should have been my fourth bucket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So pretty much, I think, like, how you conducted the case was pretty good. So first off, like, I want to know what you think about this type of case. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's there's a lot of questions to ask, yeah. Like a, like we talked about a little earlier. I'm more used mm-hmm. to the cases where they kind of give you everything upfront because uh, mm-hmm. the firms I've been applying to, that's that's how they do it. And I've been mainly prepping for those firms. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is definitely good um, practice here for if I, you know, were to apply for a firm that kind of does these more uh, mm-hmm. typical cases. So it's always goes to get to practice uh, different because you know, uh, depending on your project, you're not gonna always have the information. Exactly. Right? So, um, that's where we're going to have to probe. So yeah, definitely thought this was good, good practice for sure. Yeah. And, and I think like a lot of people, they practice their cases like, oh, this is specifically for the interview. But to be honest, this is very similar to how it's like in reality. Most yeah. of the time you won't even get any of the information. You're kind of stuck with the SOW and some projects out there don't even have an SOW. You're in that kind of like business development sales pursuit and you're involved because you're trying to get somewhere involved. And then that's where you get into all of this. Like there's something called orals and consulting that uh-huh. they're, they're gonna like try to do a discovery session with you and say like, okay, what are your problems? What are you, blah, blah, blah. And then what the consulting firm can offer as a solution to that. So with that in mind, like you're gonna have a lot more of this if you're more in the management consulting or strategy consulting. Technology consulting is more focused on like, okay, the, they already came up with a solution. Either the actual yeah. company or the consulting firm in a different area of the firm has already come up with a solution. The technology consulting is like, okay, now we're gonna come and implement it, but how do you wanna yeah. do this? Why do you wanna do this? And then you make design choices instead of like, what solution could it be? So that's like the yeah. difference between the two. If you do tech strategy, it may be more this kind of style, but mm-hmm. more technology consulting will be very similar to the one that we take with like, they give you all the information upfront or they give you a piece of paper upfront. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for for you, uh, Christine, uh, with, yep. with with your essential, um, do you, are you more on just tech, or are you more on tech strategy on what you're currently doing? Yeah, so I'm more on tech, and the thing is, like in functional side, it's very similar to this particular style where we have an idea, like okay, well, they want workday and they want these particular things in scope. That's all uh-huh. we get, and then now we know, like okay, this company is a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. And we, we could look it up online and like look up the, inter, in the actual company, but sometimes the companies are too small that they don't really have much online about the in, inner workings. And that's where we have a lot of these kind of questions like, okay, how do you currently do your supply chain management? Okay, how do you currently do this particular the area? Do you have any particular hoops you need to jump over for like approvals or anything like that? Anything particular specific to this particular company that's not the same from other industries and in, in which they may even ask you like, shouldn't you be knowing this? Like you worked in this industry, right? And then most likely you don't. Uh, but if you're focusing in industry, they're gonna ask you that question a lot. Like how have other people done it? Like maybe we want to change. Most likely though, they're gonna always wanna stick to their current way of doing. And mm-hmm. they're gonna be like talking to you to try to move it into the new system in which most likely they're gonna change into a new process. So that's why these kind of questions are very important to know what exactly is it? Why are they doing what they do instead of what they do? Because if you focus on the what they do, you're just gonna replicate exactly what they're currently doing in their old system. When really you should be focusing on the how and the why and then making sure all the new processes actually support that, like the same exact mission that they're trying to do. So I would say like, if you're on the functional side, learning more about the business requirements, it is gonna be very this style, the ones where you have all the information up front are typically going to be like, okay, we have this information, build this up. That is probably a little bit yeah, more on the yeah. technical side, but you'll still have like business analysts, functional consultants or whatnot to kind of tweak a little bit and say like, oh yeah, this is a limitation, but we could do this way. So that, that that's like, just it really depends on the scope of the project, who's working on it, what exactly is going to be the one that is the output. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um... Would you have any advice, like after me going through this case, do you see kind of where, um, you know, where my strengths and weaknesses are? Like, yeah. where, where do you think I, I could fit in? Do you think I would be more of the strategy side or more of like the tech side is what it looks like? 
Yeah, I, I mean, like, I don't know your background at all, other than the fact you're, you were in the healthcare industry healthcare or you want to be in the healthcare industry. Uh, so I do know that you were very professional with how you conducted yourself. You asked questions. So that was a good thing. And you knew the industry, which I knew that already from you. Like you mentioned HIPAA, and then you mentioned all of these other things as well that showed that you have a strong understanding of the industry to even speak mm -hmm. this confidently about. Otherwise, I would have been like, um, you know, like HIPAA. <laughs> but you said it as if you knew about it too. So that was good. I was actually waiting for that to come out to say like, are you going to mention security? Are you going to mention HIPAA? And if you did, that was a check for me. <laughs> so okay. that was something that was really big for me. I would say you did struggle a little bit more about um, maybe it's just your inexperience with this type of case, but it really was like the initial questions you asked could have drove it in a different way. And sometimes like the consulting way of doing like, oh, let's make an assumption. And then knowing about like, how would a client react to the assumption or calling the client they, that was like one of the things. So again, I think this is like, if you were to have an actual client project, I think you would know who to say you. Yeah, yeah, but I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think this is like just something that you need a little bit more practice, but it could come out during an interview because the interviewer is yeah. not the client. So you may kind of slip into that as well. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of, I was like, hmm, I mean, I know, like, I know they're acting like the client, but I'm, this is a mock interview. Like, so I, I just went mm -hmm. back and forth. Uh, yeah, I kind of need to practice that a little bit more. Yeah, and and sometimes you can tell what how to actually address the interviewer by how they say it. Like if it's like Deloitte or McKinsey or all all these other or maybe even Accenture that says uh -huh. the client name as if it's not them, and then they say yeah. they in the actual case. Then you know the interviewer is just kind of facilitating it. If the way I did it was like my organization, then you know for sure the yeah. actual interviewer is acting as the client. So act accordingly to that. Okay. Yeah. Most mm -hmm. of the cases like I've kind of done is more of like they refer yeah. to as they, the yeah. client. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. So this, this, this is newer, this newer, you're acting like a, <laughs> like the actual client. So that's kind of probably why I was a little confused. I was like, oh wait, <laughs> they, oops. <laughs> yeah. I, I think if, if it was a real situation, I was actually mm -hmm. working with a client. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't think I would yeah, refer <laughs> to them as they. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think you did pretty well. Uh, did you have any particular questions about this type of case or even like maybe even the kind of case that this is? I'm, I'm not a, a um, straight from campus, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, candidate. So let's talk about um, experience hires versus yep. um, campus hires. because yep. I think that'd be a great topic. Mm -hmm. um, have you have you conducted interviews because i know you teach these but have you actually conducted help no and, and i don't even think i'm allowed to do a youtube video on it if i did <laughs> if you were oh, okay gotcha. yeah so that, that's good um but even based kind of on your opinion um do you know what be the big difference between a, a campus um candidate versus an experience hire yeah so campus hires you definitely have a like an actual extensive program to go through like assessments or a case interview or situation or questions. Experience hires, to be honest, it differs if you've been referred or you're not. So if you've been referred, you most likely will not have anything questioning about your credentials or your cases because I know I know a lot of people have gone through that particular route and they're just like all they're all behavioral interviews. Um, and then yeah. the ones where they have been like completely outside the system, their experience hires, they have either been I think like actually if you've been poached or something like by a recruiter, you're going through this route. If you're in this route where you just like you went to the firm itself, they're still going to go through the process of like, okay, are you good or not? But typically, at least at Accenture, I don't think they do that many case interviews if you're already a consultant, just because like, you know, like we already think that you're going to do well, we're going to do reference checks. They always, all these companies do reference checks after you get the offer. And then they're going to see like, how are you actually like, are you, a, are you psychopath? And which <laughs> they'll figure out on the first call, but uh, like they can kind of tell when they do the behavioral interview, like, okay, like they'll ask you the typical questions. Like, have you worked with a difficult client? And then based off of how you answer that, you don't really need a case interview. You just have, you pull these experiences from your resume or from your background. And um, usually they're people that have like a really strong or knowledgeable in this particular area that you're getting in. So they can see through the BS if you were to say anything wrong. Oh, but oh yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so like if you were in healthcare and then the interviewer was in healthcare and they, they ask all these questions, you, you better know the answer. So <laughs> if, like if you're lying <laughs> that you know it, then they're gonna know. But uh, yeah, that's why I say it's like a little bit different. And I think it's gonna be the mm -hmm. same in other firms as well because like if you're already being 
if someone in the company already thinks you're skilled or knowledgeable in this particular area, it means that, yes, there's a reason why you're putting your, your personal reputation on the line for that person. And yeah. I don't even think there's many case interviews specifically for tech as an experienced hire. It's mostly as an entry level to know, do you have the foundation to grow? If you just don't have that thought of like, okay, how to even handle any client situation, then it's going to be very difficult because the first day you're on the job, you're supposed to be client ready already. So they don't want to like go through this very important meeting that they're not going to say, no, you can't go to it just because you're young and you're, you're new. They're going to want you to know like, okay, do you know how to behave properly? If you don't, you're going to make us look so bad that we haven't trained because the client doesn't care that you're new. The client just wants to know, can you do the work and can you deliver? So that's why it's very important that at least in the entry level, they're a little bit more tough. Plus there's a lot more com competition. You're working against all the students at the same exact time, at the same, like all these different areas, like maybe even different countries. But experience higher, we already have kind of narrowed down based off of your experience, your skill set, and even people who may have vouched for you. So there's already a smaller pool to begin with. So if you would like to also be a part of this program, definitely check the link down below. We do a lot of these free coaching programs as well, either resumes, cover letters, job application, case interviews, or mock interviews, behavioral specifically too, or even just success on the job. So definitely check out that link down below. In addition to, if you want that paid coaching experience that's private and not on YouTube, then you can also DM me specifically on Instagram or LinkedIn. Thank you everyone and see you guys next time. Bye.